Row, row, row your boat. 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 Just because every day when we would go to school, the teacher would sit me on the desk and I would sing a song to the class before the class started. Um, and so, I, from that moment on, I was aware um, that I was able to reach people and people actually responded to what I was saying. Um, I mean, I first had the vision when I was seven years old, um, but what's really interesting now that I've been in the space and, and you start to recall things and sometimes you forget, um, is I actually, um, I had a uh, museum um, when I was about 10 um, and it was run out of our garage. Um, and I would take things that my parents were collecting that they thought were very valuable and then I would charge um, the neighborhood five cents um, to come in. space did, but even when I look at the very earliest writings that I had, the things that stick out to me is that I kept emphasizing that the space would be for all people. It would it would transcend gender, it would transcend race, it would transcend um, economic situations because it was a, again about when I saw someone that emoted the truth. And I think just for my own upbringing, the reason I could recognize that was, was also because I was funneling these people I was seeing in books with the people that I actually would have in my life on a day to day basis. What they said, not change it, but to deliver what they said. Because I think what happens is, of course, we receive the message from Spirit, but because we are human and we go through life, we're hearing friends, we're hearing other colleagues, and before we know it, we've chipped away what was this amazing, pure thing. And we've made something that still can be wonderful, but it's not the dish that was divinely to be given to people. And for me, again, just in my own sense of who I am, why I do what I do, it's so important to realize I have to do it the way I think the Spirit tells me to do it versus what I think might bring a larger monetary gain. concept of currency, the concept of um, what has value. And for me collecting, you know, it really did begin when I was a child. I mean, my parents initially started it because they constantly, um, I don't think they realized what they were doing, but they constantly, for every one view, they presented another view. And so I always say my parents really had this amazing way of just almost stepping aside and saying, now I've, I've given you right answers and I've given you wrong answers, but at the end of the day, you have to decide. You have to make those decisions and you're gonna live with those decisions. Again, when people would say, my reference is this, especially if I love that person, I suddenly wanted to know, well, if you love them, I must, I must know who they are because I would love them too. You know, and so I always think of how my collecting really is just because when I'm hearing someone talk about something or someone's really giddy about something, suddenly I'm like, well, I want to know it too. You know, and clearly if they've produced it, if they've taken it out of their head, they must have wanted someone again, as we see, we call this thing, the keeper of the flame. You know, so the body blackness really stems from, and I talk about that rumbling, this rumbling of finding so many people valuing themselves based on something they call currency. At the end of the day, you find little ways to trick people to find the truth. You know, and so again, it's you space because when I realized my moment in the space is a very private moment. It will never be what it is to be to someone else. But when a person comes in, if their spirit is open, the space will have its own private conversation. Because again, I, I'm not spirit, so I don't have to be privy to the work that needs to be done in individual. And 
so for me, I think what I enjoy is that people know anyone can walk through this.